Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Bynes from GTCheckIt.com back once again with your Tutorial Tuesday. Today what we're going over is an effect that I was planning on saving for a couple weeks from now because I had some other tutorials in mind, but I posted it on Facebook just to see what people thought of it, and a lot of people really, 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 really liked it. So I figured what the heck I'll do it this week. And what we're actually doing is taking a picture that looks something like this, uh, which is me just kind of standing on some generator thing, making it look like I have huge cojones, which may or may not be true, but that's not the point. And we're going to make it look like this. Bam! Great balls of fire! I'm sorry, I just had to do it. I, I couldn't resist. <laughs> so anyway, you get the general idea. We're taking a picture and making it look like we're holding fire in our hands, because... You have to admit, who hasn't ever imagined that they want to hold fire in their hands? Because that's that would just be so awesome if you could do that in real life. But this is as close as we're ever going to get, so this will just have to do. And just to throw this out there for kicks, uh, you don't have to stop here at the end of this tutorial. You can actually add a little bit of your own flair, like maybe a vignette or some dramatic desaturization, like, you know, crazy contrasting all that, just to make it a little more epic. But that's up to you. In the end, we're just going to make this right here. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So let's close that up. And obviously, the first step is to open up your picture. So let's go ahead and drag this on in. And so the first step we're going to take is to go ahead and make this a little bit darker because the image I'm using is a little bright because I took it outside in the middle of the day. And shoot, it's Arizona. There's a lot of sunlight. So let's start off by adding the levels adjustment layer on this right hand side. And I'm just going to put the midtones down to about 0.5. And that's going to bring down the, the shading a lot. But you know what? That's what I want, so we're okay. And so obviously, when you put fire in your hands, you can assume that there's going to be a little bit of a glow around them. So let's go ahead and mask off that little bit of the levels adjustment layer to make it look like there's a little bit of a glow. So let's paint in black right there and black right there on the mask of the levels adjustment layer. So that way, the... The levels adjustment only applies to everything else except for that little spotlight around the hands. So with that out of the way, we're going to get right into this and go ahead and bring in our fire. So we're just going to use this uh, little bit of fire right here. I've used this in a previous tutorial and I figured I'd use it again because, eh, what the heck, it's free and I won't get sued for copyright infringement, so what the heck. So just make a free account here and go to the link in the description. And so let's go ahead and use this first little image right here. Click the download link, but it's just going to open in another page. So what we'll do is right click, copy the image, swap back to Photoshop, and paste it with Control-V. Or Command-V if you're on a Mac, of course. And so let's go ahead and just rename this uh, Fire 1. And we'll put that into a group by hitting Control-G. And let's just rename this Flames. And by the way, I'm going to be explaining this in a way that experienced Photoshop users can understand because there is masking involved and I don't feel like taking a crap load of time to explain how the masking works. So hopefully you already know how masking works and you can follow along just fine. So anyway, let's go ahead and take this flames group and change the blend mode to screen. And let's go to our fire one layer and let's go ahead and transform it with control T or command T for on a Mac. And let's just kind of size this down. Start putting it over by my hands, and let's kind of stretch it up, maybe a little bit like that. Maybe a little bit smaller, or something like that. Alright, so that's looking pretty good, but now we want to go ahead and warp it a little bit. So let's right click, and go to warp, and let's start bringing in these corners over here to kind of give it that, a little more of a ball feel to it. Let's maybe drag this down, like so, and start getting the fix, something kind of like that. So just kind of tinker with this to, to kind of make it look like it's coming off your hand like so. And when you've got something that you think looks pretty good, go ahead and hit that little check mark at the top uh, little area right there. And so now, obviously, we want to go ahead and mask this a little bit so that it looks like the fire is behind the fingers on my hand. So let's go ahead and add a layer mask to the flames group. And let's go ahead and grab our brush and I'll size it up. Oh, there we go. I had the caps lock on so I couldn't see my brush. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and start getting rid of some of this fire by masking it away. Just kind of mostly getting rid of it on the fingertips and a little more on the rest of my finger. Don't have to get rid of all of it. So somewhere around there is looking pretty good. 
Just gonna keep this pretty simple and straightforward. And you'll also notice that there's a little bit of a harsh edge on the fire itself, but I don't wanna mask that off on the group. I wanna mask that off on the fire itself. So let's go ahead and add a layer mask to that fire and start uh, getting rid of some of that right there. And maybe a little bit over here. Just kind of get rid of some of that harsh edges that we see. Definitely don't want to see all that. You know, let's just get rid of all that. All right, so that's looking pretty good just as it is. Um, yeah, can't really think of anything else to do to it, so let's go ahead and add on to the next little bit of fire. So let's go back to our web browser, and let's click on the second bit of fire, click the download link, and let's go ahead and copy that image and swap back and paste it on in. And let's just go ahead and name this fire two. And once again, let's go ahead and transform that, size it on down, kind of get it to scale, see how we like it. Maybe we'll just drag that down, maybe squeeze it a little bit. And please try not to make that into some cruel joke in the comments, because come on, you're, you're people on YouTube, you got better manners than that, right? Right? Okay, maybe not. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this part a little bit just so you don't have to hear me rambling on and on as I go through all these little bits and pieces here and there as I just tweak this. So I'm just going to fast forward and see how this goes. Alright, so I just finished uh, really quickly going through and masking off the fire so that it wasn't uh, showing on the top of my fingers. And so now what we want to do is go ahead and intensify this a little bit so that the, the fire just looks a little brighter and maybe a little more crazy, I guess. So we're just going to keep this simple. Let's go back to the Fire 1 layer and we'll duplicate that by hitting Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. Let's bring up the Transform tool again with Control T or Command T. We'll right click it, go to flip horizontal, and let's go ahead and bring it on over here. Oh shoot, <laughs> we can't see it. Man, I was trying to make this nice and simple. Okay, so I made one little mistake. Apparently setting the whole group to screen didn't quite work out. So let's go ahead and put the group back to pass through. And then on each one of these fire layers, put the blend mode to screen. So, this is just one of those things when it comes to Photoshop, when, it, when you want to troubleshoot stuff. <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of embarrassing when you're doing it during a tutorial, but anyway, we went ahead and go ahead and fix that. So hopefully if you had an issue on your end, that kind of helps you figure out how to fix that on your own. So let's go ahead and bring up the transform tool once again on that Fire 1 copy layer that we made. And let's go ahead and size it down and put it more towards the palm of my hand. And somewhere around there is looking pretty good. Now, of course, since we duplicated this, you might notice the uh, some bits here and there that kind of look like they're duplicated. For example, you see that this has a hook right there, and you can kind of see that hook on the same side over here. So I'll just go back to the mask on that and just kind of get rid of that, just so that it's not quite so obvious that I duplicated it on over. And we'll do the same thing for the Fire 2 layer. Just duplicate it, and then transform it, flip it horizontally, and we'll just kind of put it on over here somewhere. Let's just size it on down. And yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. So somewhere around there is looking pretty good. But of course, we're getting a little too crazy on the fire. So let's kind of fix that up a little bit. And let's see, maybe get rid of some of that fire over there. And we're looking pretty good. Alright, so now that we've got our fire in place, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and intensify the glow around it. So let's go ahead and close up the group for the flames, and let's make a new layer, and let's just call this glow. And so with your brush tool, with your foreground color set to white, or black, or green, or orange, or whatever the heck you want, just go ahead and make it about the size of your palm, or maybe a little bit bigger, and click, and click again on the other side. 
And what we're going to do is put the fill all the way down to 0% and give this layer a color overlay. And we're going to set the blend mode on that color overlay to color dodge. And then we'll click this little red box and make it more of an orangey color. And just kind of get it to a point that you think looks pretty good. And I think that looks good just as, uh, as it is. And if you really don't feel like making up your own number, the one that I'm using right now is FF4200. And so when you got that, go ahead and hit OK. And hit OK again. And we're doing pretty good so far. So the next thing we're going to add is a little bit of a color correction on this. Or a color balance, I should say. Because we've got red and orange flames going on, but I'm still pretty, uh, I still got some tan stuff going on around my shirt and my skin and all that. So let's go ahead and add a color balance up here, give that a click. And the layer mask on that is, right now is set to white, so let's go ahead and fill that in with black by hitting Alt Backspace or Option Delete if you're on a Mac, assuming you've got black as your foreground color. And so then, uh, let's just go ahead and tweak this a little bit. So let's put the red up to about somewhere in the 40 or 50 range, and then put the yellow down to maybe around 20-ish, somewhere in there. And then with your layer mask selected on the color balance, just start painting in uh, around the side of your shirt, maybe around your hands. And then if you so choose, you can put down the opacity on your brush and start adding in a little red on the rest of your shirt and maybe your pants and just things of that sort. And if you're really meticulous about it, you can go back and swap your foreground color back to black and get rid of the coloring that's being applied to the background, like in the in the sky and all that. So but that's kind of up to you. Uh, personally, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. And let's just kind of take a step back and see how it looks. So let's do a little before and after. So just turning the, the layer on and off, I actually really like how this is looking. So I've got the midtones uh, with a plus 43 on the red and around minus 19 for the yellows. And I think that's looking pretty good. So there's one more thing that I kind of want to add to this, just kind of add to it a little bit. And that's to make the fire itself look a little more wavy and maybe a little blurry. So the way I'm going to do that is by merging everything into one layer by hitting Control, Alt, Shift, E, uh, making sure that you had that color balance layer selected so that way I made it on top of that. So let's just go ahead and rename this uh, Wavy. So with this Wavy layer selected, let's go to Filter, uh, let's go to Distort, and let's go Wave. And as soon as that comes up, it's taking a sweet time, let's go ahead and get right into this. So the number of generators I'm using is set to 2, and the minimum wavelength, I'm keeping that at 10, but the maximum, I'm going to set that to about 215. The minimum amplitude, I'll put that to about 15, with a maximum of 115. And then the horizontal, we're going to keep that at 25%, with a vertical of 50%. And uh, the repeat edge pixels versus wraparound isn't really too important, but you do want to make sure that your type is set to sign. And just keep in mind that this might be a little different um, if you're on a different size picture. So you might have to tweak the settings and go back and forth just to see if you get something that looks a little bit better. Because, you know, different size pictures are going to have different size results. So just mess with that until you get something you like and hit OK. And so once you got something looking pretty good, just kind of zoom in. Obviously it looks a little bit funky, but that's OK. So with the wavy layer selected, go ahead and add a blank layer mask on it by alt-clicking the uh, layer mask icon or option click if you're on a Mac, I believe. And so with that layer mask selected, just go ahead and brush in white to bring it back around where the fire is. So everything around there and everything around there. Do, 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 do. And of course, you can always go back and get rid of the distortions on like the arms and the shoulders and all that. And of course the hands. Unless you really like that, you can probably bring that back if you think that looks kind of cool. I don't know, up to you. Personally, I think it looks a little too funky. So I'll just kind of get rid of that. So let's just do something like that. It might be something good to keep there because obviously the, the waves of the fire are gonna kind of distort like the air around it. So it might be something kind of good to keep there. So anyway, once you got that there, you can either keep it or leave it, 
or maybe you can change the opacity down to about 50%, just so that it kind of blends and kind of blurs it a little bit, makes it a little bit more, uh, I don't know, a little more interesting, I guess. But what you do with that is completely up to you, not entirely necessary. All right, so with that, you should be done. That's all there is to this tutorial. So like I said, I kind of went through this in a way for experienced users to understand. So if you don't really know how masking works and you really want to do this, then I suggest you go look up some tutorials on how masking works. There are some pretty good tutorials out there already. So anyway, I guess I'll go ahead and do my little ending spaz or whatever. Uh, go ahead and visit us on Facebook if you like doing these little uh, Photoshop tricks and all that and you want to join in on the community. We're always welcome to new people. And of course, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe if you haven't already, comment, share with the others, all that good stuff. Just kind of help us out to get a little more, a little more publicity, so that way we get a little more revenue. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, jokes aside, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and hopefully I come up with something interesting for next week. But until then, enjoy this tutorial and your other effects, and I'll see you next Tuesday. <laughs>